This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh and by Manscaped. Well, we've got plenty of weird coronavirus news for you today. Uh, terrible, sad, scary, depressing news, but also weird. This is Weekly Weird News, after yeah. all. But before we talk about any of that, let's start things off with just a little bit of non-coronavirus news. Specifically, news about a Netflix show that owes a large amount of its success to the fact that people are stuck at home in quarantine and willing to binge watch a five and a half hour documentary about people who choose to own dozens of lions and tigers. Tiger King is pretty much the only thing that most people can talk about right now that isn't pandemic related. And when I say most people, that includes people like O.J. Simpson. Yeah, there's two things on everyone's mind. Tiger King and the outbreak. And O.J. is no different. He's yeah. different from us in a lot of ways. Yeah. But also... And O.J., yeah. as of most recently, uh, most recent years, he is a Florida man. He is a Florida man, yes. So yes, OJ has some thoughts on Tiger King, specifically about its biggest unanswered question. If you haven't watched Tiger King yet, what are you doing? Everyone's seen it. Come on. You got nothing else going Basically, on. Basically, it's a show about people who run private animal farms in the American South featuring extremely dangerous animals. Oklahoma is the Midwest, but it feels like the South uh, the entire I'll, time. I'll count it as South. Yeah, the titular Tiger King that the show mainly focuses on, focuses on is Joe Exotic. He's a very eccentric and fascinating character, but his nemesis... That bitch, Carol Baskin of Tampa's Big Cat Rescue, who seems pretty normal at first glance, she actually has an even crazier backstory. So back in 1997, her millionaire husband disappeared, just poof, and uh, later he was declared legally dead. Mm -hmm. Many people, including his children and former business associates, as well as Joe Exotic, think that Carol Baskin killed him and fed him to the tigers. I don't know what I think, but I'm it's intrigued. A Yes. The documentary does a fantastic job of uh, bringing you back and forth with your hatred or admiration or compassion or back to hatred yeah. with a lot of people throughout the uh, series. Well, I have no compassion for any of them. Yeah, I think they're all pretty terrible when it comes e down to except it. Except so. for except for Saf, who loses, uh, loses his hand. Mm. I feel bad mm. for him. Uh, so O.J. Simpson, of course, is most known at this point for being charged with the murders of his ex-wife and her friend and then found not guilty despite it sure as hell looking like he did in fact do it. Mm -hmm. And more lately, uh, O.J. is known for his Twitter account that everyone follows because it is just so morbidly fascinating to watch this guy who allegedly, definitely, <laughs> committed a double murder uh, just do normal video selfie posts about his daily life like any other celebrity. So here's what he said. Here's what he posted this week about Tiger King. Mm -hmm. Hey, Twitter world, yours truly. I just got back from the golf course where I actually played pretty well. Uh, now it's back at home, back to the couch, and back to television. Listen. I've had so many people on my case asking me to watch some show called Tiger King. Well, yesterday I watched this show, and oh my God, is America in this bad a shape? I watched about six episodes of this show, and I couldn't even believe what I was looking at. White people! What's with you and wild animals? Leave them animals alone! <laughs> the show is crazy, but it's so crazy you kind of keep watching. One thing I will say, there's not a shred of doubt in my mind that that lady's husband is uh, Tiger Shushimi right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> Take care, and I hope you find something better to watch. So there's that. And like we said on Monday's episode, local law enforcement in Tampa, they've reopened their case on the disappearance of Carol's ex-husband, though there's not really any reason to think that the case will ever get solved. Meanwhile, Joe Exotic himself is, spoiler alert, in prison serving a 22-year sentence for attempting to have Carol Baskin murdered, among other crimes. And right now, people in prison are at much higher risk of contracting the coronavirus than people outside. There were actually reports earlier this week that he had it, but the word right now is uh, it's been moved, uh, that he's been moved to a new prison and put in medical isolation because his previous prison had a big coronavirus outbreak. So, so he might have it. Yeah, there's a good chance he does, Man. but... So, yeah, he may be infected, but we don't know right now. Either way, prayers for Joe Exotic. Yeah. I mean, when I said that I don't sympathize with any of these people, I probably sympathize with Joe the most. He's a bad person, but compared to everyone else in this documentary, I, uh, he's a real person. He's a real one. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of feelings to go around. There's a lot. It's, it's fascinating. If it wasn't real life, he would be the best fictional character ever. Yeah, he's a real life Danny McBride character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also another weird Tiger King news that's popped up in the wake of this documentary success. Uh, turns out 
Florida man and United States Senator Marco Rubio has a direct connection to this whole mess.、Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the various weirdo big cat zookeepers featured in the show was Mario Tabrau, a、uh, former cocaine kingpin who, in his words, sold drugs to maintain his animal habit, and who was at one point serving a 100-year prison sentence for a bunch of serious crimes、uh, before getting out thanks to a successful appeal and also becoming an informant.、Mm. Uh, well, turns out Senator Marco Rubio's brother-in-law used to be the number two guy in Mario Tabrau's cocaine empire. <laughs> I'm fucking.、So. <laughs> this is so great. There's so many. There's so many things that are connected to this story. Like it branches out like the most beautiful tree well, of that, life you've ever seen. It's especially so. Mar- Marco Rubio's brother-in-law met Mario Tabrau because they're both animal people.、Mm-hmm. Rubio's brother-in-law was a bird guy. Had like hundreds of fucking exotic birds. And at the pet store, he met this other guy. He's like, "Hey, you also own a bunch of fucking weird animals. We could be best friends. Do you like cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we live in Miami. <laughs> This is a match made in heaven. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> teenage Marco Rubio, when he was a teenager in the '80s, the cocaine '80s. Yeah.、Uh, he even briefly lived with his sister and her husband in a house where cocaine was definitely being packaged for sale.、Mm-hmm. There was an entire room dedicated to it. He had to have known. So anyway, Joe Exotic himself, he has his own pretty strong opinions about Marco Rubio that someone found. Let's check it out. Marco Rubio, down there in Florida, your name's on the wall of Big Cat Rescue down there. Now, if you think fucking America is gonna back somebody to run for this presidency that can support somebody with 60 counts of felony fraud, possibly grind her husband up and fed him to the fucking tigers, which would what? Consider you a supporter of a murderess? We damn sure ain't gonna let you become president of the United States, you crooked bastard. You need to do some soul searching and find out where the hell your name's hanging up. Because if I get this picture that I'm after your name being as a supporter of Big Cat Rescue down there in Tampa, Florida, scamming the American public for a hundred thousand dollars for a fifteen-year-old tiger, publicly. I'm gonna destroy you, buddy. Now, in other news, it's only coronavirus adjacent. A lot of people are not handling self-isolation very well. But Norwegian performance artist Jan Hakon Eriksson is having an especially difficult time with it, thanks to the fact that he's gone out of his way to make his home life pointlessly dangerous. A while back, Eriksson went viral with videos showing him popping balloons with various homemade contraptions, most of which had a bunch of knives and other sharp objects attached.、Uh, Yeah, lots and lots of knives, popping balloons in every way imaginable. It's truly something to behold.、Uh, it's enjoyable. It's good concept.、Uh, one such object is what he calls his knife sculpture, which is essentially just a board with about a hundred knives sticking through it.、Uh, so you see where this is going. Yeah. So most recently, Erickson has been making performance art videos involving fruits and vegetables and tape and step ladders and chairs. Also, something he describes as furniture aerobics. I'm not sure what that was, but anyway, here's what he tweeted on Thursday. So it turns out I'm an idiot. <laughs> Yesterday I was making one of my furniture aerobics videos and I was balancing on something sketchy. Needless to say, I fell and I fell onto my、Ooh. knife sculpture. Second pick <laughs> because I'm an idiot who leaves life-threatening items standing around. <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's it's easy to see how this could happen. He went from the from furniture aerobics to pain Olympics like、yeah. that. <laughs> Uh, don't ever watch the video. No, don't.、Uh, next day, though, Erickson posted, "Quote: So I've had my surgery, and they stitched together my little finger nerve and tendon, which were both cut. I'll be fine, but it's going to take a long time."、Uh, sounds like he's on the mend. Unfortunately for the knife sculpture, though, it sounds like Erickson is going to dismantle it and won't be doing any more knife videos for a very long time, if ever again. It's hell of a way to learn a lesson. Fortunately, there's still all the old knife videos and the Pain Olympics. Show、don't, your friends. Don't, don't, don't.、Uh, thanks to、uh, Jan Hakon Eriksson, we've all now learned an important lesson about not having a wall of sharp knives just sitting around your homes to be fallen on. Yeah, yeah. Who could have? Who could have known? Yeah, if you've ever, you know, browsed by the "What Could Go Wrong" subreddit, you would imagine that you'd want to keep your home as fail-safe as pro- possible as far as、uh, not this guy risks go. This guy's an artist. I mean,、hey. there is something to be said about art. Yeah. I mean, this injury is in its own way it's performance art. It's performance art.、Mm-hmm. Anyway, now for the rest of the show until I don't know, like the last three headlines or so. <laughs> it's all COVID nineteen news. Woo! Starting with some updates to previous stories.、Uh, Ronald Howard Brown, the unfortunate-looking Florida megachurch pastor who urged his congregants to keep showing up at church and to all keep hugging and shaking hands, then got arrested for continuing to hold large gatherings even after the state of Florida banned them, has finally caved and shut down his church. But why now? The governor just put that clause in the their、uh, stay-at-home response that said that church gatherings are fine. 
Uh, but his church gatherings are like 500 people. Yeah, you can only do 10 people. But you can yeah. do 10 people at a time and, yeah, and thereby about, infect all of them. It's not really a church service. That's more of a revival. <laughs> it's church drive through but, but yeah, uh, actually, so I said he caved, but in his words, quote, I'm not caving. Oh, okay, okay <laughs> great. Uh, he says he's doing this because, quote, I have to do this to protect the congregation, not from the virus, but from the tyrannical government. Great. Uh, he'll be holding his church services via live stream going forward. Can't wait. I'll be there tomorrow with mm -hmm. a bucket of popcorn. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, if he figures out how to set up stream labs to keep the donos coming in. Yeah. That would be fantastic. But again, he did not cave. Quote, I'm not making any decisions based on the threats from the sheriff's office or not. I make decisions based on what the Lord tells me to do. The Lord told me on Monday, if I don't do this, there's going to be a showdown at the OK Corral. Good thing Jesus knows about the OK Corral. Yeah. I mean... He's a big history buff, that Jesus. But I, I planted that seed, like, uh, in one of the previous episodes, about, like, the, we're going to have another fucking Waco situation. Yeah. Some church somewhere in the U.S. is going to go full Waco. They're going to defy the government. It'll probably end up being more along the lines of, like, Bundy Ranch. But some fucking stupid church yeah. is going to defy all the rules and cause a bunch of trouble for no reason. But I'm well, glad Ronald Howard Brown has the good sense that uh, if he dies, the money stops coming in. So, yeah. you know, make do. So, but, yeah, uh, okay, Rodney, uh, whatever you have to do to, or whatever you tell yourself to save face, okay. Yeah. In the end, that's one less place where careless Floridians can spread the disease now, which is good. It's just several weeks too late. And as I've said before, that nothing is changing in Florida. As far as I've seen from a distance and from talking to my relatives, they are all like, in a very not so subtle way, mocking me and my friends and my wife in California for being such pussies about it. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of really painful told you so's are coming down the line. It, well, uh, it's going to be very painful. Uh, people will die. But it also just kind of sucks. That it's like, like, fuck you. Like, we're doing, yeah. we're staying inside. We're doing the best of our, of our ability. Like, it's just me and Elliot filming. Like, there's, we're doing everything we can. They're just like, I went out on the jet ski today, pussy. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Florida man. Uh, in another update, uh, it's officially been a month since Elon Musk tweeted out, the coronavirus panic is dumb. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, he's gone from constantly downplaying the projections to telling his SpaceX employees in a memo not to worry because they're more likely to die in a car crash to saying that he'll manufacture ventilators if there is a shortage and then being yelled at by everyone uh, who's actually being paying, paying attention because there definitely is a fucking shortage. Yeah, and even was back when he tweeted it. Yeah. But in fairness, uh, he did go ahead and order 1,200 ventilators from China to, <laughs> donate, <laughs> to donate to hospitals that need them. So that's good. Or did he, though? Listen, as much as we dog on Elon, it really felt nice to see him actually using his vast wealth to slightly improve conditions in Americans ho America's hospitals during the worst pandemic in 100 years. And we gave him that credit mm -hmm. because we thought he earned it. But we may have been premature with our praise because it turns out he didn't actually supply any ventilators. What he did buy were CPAP and BiPAP machines, the ones that are normally used for sleep apnea. These machines, they do help people breathe, just not nearly as effectively as actual ventilators. But unfortunately for COVID-19 specifically, they're pretty much useless, at least for now. Uh, the reason being that CPAP and BiPAP machines, they actually help spread the disease by aerosolizing the virus into the air. Hmm. So not yeah. exactly the, the best thing. Now, they could help, but... They're not ventilators. Yeah. And regardless of whether or not they're ventilators, he still slapped that fucking Tesla logo on the side of the boxes. Well, yeah, you got to let him know. He covered the Made in China, ordered from Alibaba sticker yeah. on the side. Covered it with the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here's a quote from NPR from an article from last month that anyone could have read, including Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. The American Society of Anesthesiologists issued guidance on February 23rd discouraging CPAP use in COVID-19 patients, advice largely informed by experience with the SARS epidemic in 2003. Studies dating to 2003 suggest that such devices can pump viruses into the air, potentially increasing the spread of a contagious disease. During the SARS outbreak in Toronto, half of all SARS cases, including three deaths, occurred among healthcare workers. Some of the greatest risk arose when doctors and nurses were exposed to aerosolized virus through the use of positive airway pressure machines or other respiratory therapy devices. Basically, since actual ventilators involve a breathing tube and work as a closed system, that the virus can't get out of that system. So CPAP and BiPAP machines, they just involve a mask and air can escape out of that mask. 
Essentially, hooking up a CPAP machine to a coronavirus patient has the same effect as if that person was just coughing into the air constantly, which is not great for hospitals. No, you don't want that. So at least out of the box, Elon's contribution here is basically useless. Though in fairness, there are efforts currently uh, in place to convert these machines into invasive ventilators pretty easily. And Elon still says he wants to use his factories to help with the manufacturing of the full-on actual ventilators, which is good. That's a yeah. good thing. He got close here. No. But I'm not going to give him the cigar just yet. Now, if you're in your own home alone and you're old and you have a CPAP machine, yeah. then throw it on, then toss it in the clean, and then pull it back out the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Uh, but leave a note on your door that says, do not come in here. Aerosolized COVID-19. Yeah, the air is all virus right now. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right, better luck next time, Elon. I mean, it's at least you didn't call anyone a pedophile this time. Eh. Though he did, he did accuse everyone criticizing him of this, of being bots, which is just the most boomer thing ever. Great. But anyway, speaking of guys getting maybe a little too much credit for how they're dealing with coronavirus, um, does New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, does he have pierced nipples? <laughs> yeah. I mean, kind of looks like it. I don't know. Maybe? It's it kind of looks like he does. It, it either looks like they're pierced nipples or he's like one of those dudes that tapes his nipples before yeah, going on a jog. Yeah, because they get Yeah. That could be it. But like, that shirt looked very uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like a polo. It's all starchy. That The nipple chafing, I mean, I get that when I'm like wearing like certain types of synthetic fabrics mm -hmm. that are maybe a little loose. If you've ever had a me, raw nipple from it being chafed, it you, sucks. you know that you have to protect that nipple. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it could be that. Or he could have pierced nips. He, he could. could. Have, he could yeah. have a kinky side. I don't know. He's I, single, but, right? I think he's single. I, he, I don't know. He might be. Yeah, I think he got divorced. Single and waiting to mingle. Yeah. Who's to say, really? Yeah. I mean, this is no time for kink shaming. No, absolutely It's just not. something some people have been observing. There's never a time for kink shaming. Yeah, we're in a pandemic. Like, I don't care if he's got a fucking Prince Albert. <laughs> yeah. Let the man deal with the, the coronavirus, even though you're all giving him way too much credit. He's been trying to cut Medicaid and Medicare for years now. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know. Give credit where it's due, but also, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. Anyway, moving on now. <laughs> Over on this side of the country, the west side, mm -hmm. uh, this week, a guy at the port of Los Angeles tried to derail a train to crash it into a Navy, <laughs> Navy hospital ship that had just arrived. Yeah. Uh, the USNS Mercy showed up this week to help relieve the pressure on all the L.A. area hospitals that are dealing with COVID-19. Which, I don't know, seems like a good thing. But this lunatic, he saw it as a threat. Yeah, specifically this guy, Eduardo Moreno, the train crasher. He told police, you only get this chance once. The whole world is watching. I had to. People don't know what's going on here. Now they will. I still don't know, though. Uh, yeah, I'm still as confused as I was before. Now, it's unclear what exactly he thought the ship was there for. But to stop it, he derailed his cargo train, smashed through a concrete barrier at the end of the track, smashed into a steel barrier, and then into a chain link fence, then slid through two parking lots before smashing into another chain link fence, which is insane. But also, according to a spokesman for the port, quote, it would have had to have gone several hundred yards through a parking lot and cross a water channel to reach the ship. The tracks are nowhere near the Mercy. Yeah, so... Depth perception. He got that. pretty far, but uh, not... Also, even if he had made it, like, I feel like it would have just bounced yeah. off the ship and then he would have drowned or well, something. Depends on how, long, how, how fast it hit it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. They, I need more information on this. If I, had to, if I had to place bets, I think this guy's probably a Q guy. Q on? Uh, we've never really gotten too deep into that stuff because... Uh, that's a whole it's, can of worms. Yeah, it's a whole can of worms. The but less I, people that I even had, care guess, about it existing, the better. Yeah, I, yeah, that's another thing. Just like, ignore I, it. I don't even like bringing it up because yeah. it's like, I better just... You're giving it power by yeah. talking about <laughs> yeah. it. But that, that's what it sounds like. It's like It sounds like something they would come up with. Like, yeah. oh, that hospital ship? It's actually full of cannibal predator, or, uh, pedophiles who are... Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're collecting everyone's babies so mm -hmm. they can, uh, you know, they can harvest their adrenochrome. The... the boat is actually docking to spray fresh COVID-19 into the air. Yeah. Not enough flights happening, so there's not enough chemtrails going on, so mm -hmm. they're using boats for that now. Did you think of that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, they do fly those FBI planes over LA all the time. Yeah. To, I it's guess... It's weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. They're dropping the, uh, the, the flies that are sterile. Yeah. Well, they, they <laughs> conduct military exercises over downtown LA like once a month, and it's supposed to be so they... 
in case of some sort of urban response, they know how to navigate. Now I'll show you a lot of flight areas. paths. It's it's, but, uh, it's different. These are little like Cessna style planes that are just looping back and forth all, uh, all day long. Well, t- don't you feel safe knowing that uh, the, <laughs> the eyes are on me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyways, we'll get into conspiracies another time. Yeah. Let's shift our focus over to some other dumb coronavirus stuff happening internationally. Yeah. Because really, this has been a great opportunity for people throughout the world to show off how weird and stupid they are. Not just America. Yeah. For example, up in Canada, a young couple from Quebec decided the best plan for avoiding coronavirus would be to sell everything and leave town. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've thought about it. Wyoming looks nice right now. Yeah. Basically no cases. Uh, So, yeah, they drove for several days all the way from Quebec to the Yukon Territory, almost 6,000 kilometers away. Then they took a flight to an even more remote location, uh, the northern village of Old Crow, with only around 250 residents, uh, most of whom are First Nations people. Yeah, so the chief of the tribe told Vice, We were busy dealing with a life-altering pandemic, and this couple just strolls off the plane like cartoon characters. (laughs) Uh, One of the village officials who caught them as they were getting off the plane said, They thought they could come to Old Crow and find a job and find a place to live. Uh, Although the the couple, they claimed this idea came to them in a dream. Well, they Uh, should have said God told them. Yeah, God's plan. So this was stupid and entitled uh, for a few reasons. So this is essentially like someone in the U.S. leaving town to just go live on an Indian reservation without giving the people there a heads up, Mm -hmm. which is rude. Um, Also, Old Crow doesn't even have a hotel. They just have some spare rooms that are reserved for the people who fly in for services, such as the doctor who visits every few months. Yeah. They don't even have their own fucking doctor. So if either of these city slickers had been carrying the virus, it would have endangered this entire village. Like, they would have been fucked. Now, Just like the uh, the colonists did to all the Native Americans yeah, in America. Yeah, they're trying to do that again. <laughs> yeah, They're trying to update that shit for the 21st century. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, luckily the couple was isolated, and the, the RCMP, they sent them packing within 48 hours. But, cool. Uh, yeah, pretty fucking... <laughs> Just such a stupid plan. Like, uh, let's just go to the middle of nowhere. Let's just go to this like fucking Arctic village where people like have to hunt all their food and like we'll figure it out, man. Yeah, the, we'll live off the land. The the Wyoming thing is true though. There's like, I mean, obviously, I don't have enough money to even fucking think about doing that. But uh, I know for a fact because I saw the story that Maury Povich immediately left New York yeah. and went to Wyoming where he has like a full fucking ranch. Yeah, they all have fucking like compounds and shit yeah. around Jackson Hole. Mm-hmm. It's like the millionaire retreat. Jackson Hole and then like uh, South Island of New Zealand. They all just own a bunch of land for worst case scenario. And they're all there right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, down in Mexico, President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, a.k.a. Om- Omlo, uh, he's been telling his citizens to stay at home. Uh, but for whatever reason, just the day after making that announcement, he left home to go visit the hometown of El Chapo, where he was seen warmly greeting El Chapo's mom and hanging out with known El Chapo associates. <laughs> So that is one hell of a way yeah. to break quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and nobody's going to be seeing me, right? Yeah, it'd be one thing, like, uh, like, you see, you spot him out at, like, the park or something. You're like, hypocrite. Yeah. You just told me to stay at home. But no, he, he really, he went for it all the way. He not only broke quarantine, he visited the family of Mexico's most notorious drug lord. Yeah. To say what's up. I'm telling you, you probably thought it was because there wouldn't be, like, cameras or, uh, yeah. like, he wouldn't get caught because every, now everyone else stay at home. And now when everyone's backs are turned, I can yeah. go get this shit done. He, just wanted, he was just there to pick up some blow because it kills the coronavirus. That's, that's, that was one of the first rumors, actually, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't actually do that. Yeah, if you just pour, like, gasoline straight down yeah. your mouth, it'll also clear If you up. put a bullet in your brain, the yeah. coronavirus cannot survive. You won't die of coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, also in Mexico, the governor of the state of Puebla recently said of coronavirus infections, quote, most of them are wealthy people. If you are rich, you are at risk. If you are poor, you are not. The poor were immune. So, uh, obviously, the actual reason for more initial cases in Mexico being among the wealthy is because those are the people who got the disease while traveling. Mm-hmm. So hopefully poor people in Mexico don't take this guy at his word about this because that would be very bad. Yeah. Uh, rich people may have gotten the disease first, but when it comes to like medical services and whatnot, I mean... Even in Mexico, if, uh, yeah, if you're poor, it's, you're, you're in worse off shape. They, they, don't they should that. stop calling it the China virus and the coronavirus and COVID. They should call it, this is the real life affluenza. It kind of is. Yeah. All the, all the we people, were worried about affluenza for so long. All the people who brought it to America are just assholes traveling around the world, going to Italy, mm-hmm. going to Cinque Terre to take some pics. Yeah. Did you see the water? It's blue. Look, I'm on a cliff. Yeah. 
Wow. You motherfuckers. Anyways, in other Mexico news, the coronavirus has finally claimed its most obvious victim, Corona beer. <laughs> Though not for the reason that you might think. And it's unknown whether the, the disease's name had any effect on sales of Corona. I would assume it does. I certainly bought more Corona. I never buy Corona, but I bought it as a meme a couple times during this lockdown. I, like, did it go cheaper in price, at least? No. Mm. Uh, no, the real reason for Corona stopping production is that Mexico's entire beer industry has been designated as non-essential by the government. That's stupid. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a great... What about margaritas? I mean, those are homemade. You mm. make... I, I'm sure all the tequila uh, distilleries have, like, at least a year's worth, like, in their warehouses. Yeah. But beer, I don't know. It's it's actually been cool because in L.A., all of the... All the breweries are, like, that. they're not open. They will give you a growler to go. Yeah, they do, go. like, curbside service. I'm going to go pick some up after we've done filming here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But, it's uh, great. They bring it right to your car. Everything's good to go. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it sucks that the cerveza is not going to be flowing in Mexico. Oh, well. Corona is not a very good beer, so... Finally, we can export something over there. All of the beer can go down to Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Now, over in Belarus, their president, Alexander Lukashenko, has uh, offered or refused to implement any sort of lockdown, which kind of makes sense considering there has only been around 300 cases there so far. Though, like with most places, it's coming for you. Every country neighboring... Uh, <laughs> Belarus has, just like, has I, done I lockdown, yeah. and he's just like, nah, we're good. Thanks, everyone, for bo for blocking us. Yeah. Lukashenko's only advice for the people of Belarus, quote, people should not only wash their hands with vodka, but also poison the virus with it. You should drink the equivalent of 40 to 50 milliliters of rectified spirit daily, but not at work. Cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. He also advises trips to the sauna two to three times a week, <laughs> saying, quote, when you come out of the sauna, not only wash your hands, but also your insides with 100 milliliters of vodka. Great Belarusian this vodka. This is like some Cold War like caricature. This was like, also one of the first things that was shot down by medical experts. Yeah. The saunas cure the coronavirus yeah. or stop it from entering This the guy's room. like a month and a half late with mm -hmm. his uh, pseudoscience. It takes a little longer for the news to get there. But he said, he said to really immunize yourself against this virus, nothing beats yard work. Quote, you just have to work, especially now in a village. Tractors will cure everyone. Hmm. The field heals everyone. Now, this line prompted a Belarusian design firm to Photoshop these amazing images of tiny pill-sized <laughs> tractors to take for the disease. <laughs> I love it. Gloop. Yeah. I'm cured. Thanks. Uh, down in Brazil, uh, their guy, Jair Bolsonaro, has also been pretty dismissive of the coronavirus and the way other countries have dealt with it, saying, the virus is here. We're going to have to confront it. Confront it like a man, not a boy. We're all going to die one day. <laughs> Jesus. Cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, our old friend Rodrigo Duterte, president of the Philippines, he's taken the opposite approach, ordering police to shoot anyone who breaks mandatory lockdown. How could this be abused in any way possible? Just like shooting drug dealers. Yeah. It's almost like they could get rid of whoever they want under false pretenses. Hmm. Yeah, sort of his thing. Yeah, he also said that medical staff who get sick while treating coronavirus patients should uh, feel lucky to die for their country. Yeah. So. Cool. Thanks. Uh, the king of Thailand, he's dealing with all this in his own special way. Mm -hmm. This guy's a real weirdo that I, uh, you'll just have to look into him, but this makes sense for yeah. this guy. Uh, he happened to be on vacation in Europe when all this started happening, so he is hunkered down right now in a luxury hotel in Germany with 20 of his favorite concubines, because <laughs> that's how he rolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one way to self-quarantine. Just, just orgies all night, yeah. all day. I don't think they're liking it back home in Thailand. A lot of people are like, why do we have a king again? Listen, I don't... I'm not an expert, but when I was in Thailand, it seemed to me that uh, the their last king that died, everyone fucking loved him. Yeah. This guy obviously just became king, yeah. and everyone's like, I don't know about this guy. And it he seems like he didn't really want to be king either, but yeah. it was like, I mean... He just walks around in like fucking crazy outfits, like dyes yeah. his hair. He has ridiculous tattoos. I don't know if it was him or his dad, but like uh, the KGB or the, the, Russia like, had them over for, mm -hmm. like, some diplomatic thing and, of course, like, bugged their hotel rooms and, like, got a fucking, like, sex tape and was like, all right, we got this leverage. What are you going to do for us? And he's like, oh, give me the tape. I, I want to show the people. They're going to love <laughs> They'll it. They'll love it, yeah. They're like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. We got nothing. Damn. That's cool. So, yeah, also over in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, their government, they apologized this week after sending out some official guidelines for women that included uh, making sure to wear makeup and avoiding nagging their husbands. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. We didn't know. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, what? You know, you look great. It's great advice. Come on. We just got the honeymooners here on TV. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, and over in India, some police officers that are enforcing the countrywide mandatory lockdown have started wearing big, ridiculous helmets that look like the virus while they do vehicle stops at checkpoints. And they're having fun with it. Just so you don't forget what this is all about. Yeah. Coronavirus. Anyways, uh, this episode is sponsored, and it is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh. A, a perfect thing to, yeah. s- to get <laughs> if you are in lockdown. Oh. I. A I, relevant uh, sponsor that's of of great use. To yes, me right now. I I re-signed up for it uh, after they had given us our trial thing. I was like, well, I'm ready to cook some good meals. Yeah, yeah. so you can get mouthwatering seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with HelloFresh. They just leave it there. You don't have to touch anyone. Yeah. Uh, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They make cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. There's something for everyone, including low calorie vegetarian, and family recipes every week. Cut out the stressful meal planning and prepping so that you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options. I had uh, beef bibimbap last night. Bibimbap. Yep. It's fun to say and it was delicious to eat. HelloFresh offers the highest quality ingredients to deliver a consistent, flavorful experience. Uh, for us, we've been especially enjoying the craft burgers options because mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty crazy how many different variations on burgers you can make. And the one-pot wonders are great for when you want a delicious meal without having to clean a bunch of pots and pans afterwards, Mm -hmm. because it's just one pot. Uh, Our viewers can get 10 free meals, including free shipping, by going to hellofresh.com slash weeklyweird10 and using code weeklyweird10 at checkout. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash weeklyweird10 and use code weeklyweird10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Another thing to point out that I realized uh, recently, you can get more than just the three meals that they send you. So I've just been getting no grocery shopping necessary. You can get uh, get a whole family size, even if you don't have a family. Yeah, save it for later. Those are meals, baby. Uh, This episode is also sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. It's time to quarantine. Manscaped and chill. Mm-hmm. You've probably been spending uh, a lot of time with your significant other right now, and uh, if you don't cle- keep it clean down there, they're going to notice. And Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game once again with their Perfect Package 3.0 Essentials Kit. It is the perfect set of tools for your family jewels. The Perfect Package 3.0 Kit comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, waterproof cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents, and millions of balls are now about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. There's also the Crop Preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits, so not, why not your balls, the smelliest part of your body? Mm-hmm. They stink. Subscribers get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, making sure that your trimmer stays fresh and clean. And for a limited time, subscribers get not one, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, worth $39, and the patented, high-performance, anti-chafing, manscaped boxer briefs. It's the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off, plus free shipping with the code WEIRD at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Again, that is 20% off and free shipping with the code WEIRD at manscaped.com. Most people are loading up on toilet paper. We're loading up on Manscaped products. Help your relationship out during this quarantine. Your partner, your body, and your balls will thank you. That's code WEIRD at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Now let's get into the weirdest headlines of the week, starting with a petition to name Dr. Anthony Fauci sexiest man alive gains momentum. <sighs> I mean, he does deserve a lot of credit for being apparently the only person in the federal government who uh, is uh, taking this seriously mm-hmm. and knows what he's talking about. But if he it, if he can figure out how to get those numbers down, I say John Legend head, hand it over. Yeah, and he is. I mean, like the guy is in great shape. He's always wearing that lab coat and shit, but he apparently like wakes up at like 4 a.m., runs like 10 miles. He's like Mark Wahlberg. He's yeah. Mark Wahlberg of doctors. Yeah. Except he doesn't abuse Asian people. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's an important <laughs> distinction. Yeah, um, I, 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 I'm uncomfortable with this this thing that Americans do, where uh, we, ch- you know, just because someone's like competent, <laughs> now they're now they're our fucking bay, and we stand. It's, it's like, like the, <laughs> there's been a lot of that with Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, because I, he's an eligible bachelor too. <sighs> like, oh, he's handling it so well. Cut I let him handle me. Like, Fauci's doing great, but he's also he's just doing his fucking job. He's mm. doing what he needs to do. 
And maybe our standards have been lowered so much over the past couple of years that that seems like you know, a noble no, thing to, yeah, do, to do what you're like, supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Also, like, I don't know. This is dumb. I guess people are coping in whatever way they can. But uh, yeah, I mean, the one thing that I will give him credit for is like he seems to be one of the few people uh, that isn't scared of Trump. Yeah. Meaning, like, I, I'm pretty sure his job is very secure until this is all over and then he'll get fired or whatever. I mean, but, he's had his job for, like, 30 years or some shit. Yeah, but uh, he has been, uh, you know, contradicting Trump on a near daily basis. Uh, he's going to get let go after this is all over, just like that Navy captain. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. yeah. You see, like, the standing, like, cheering ovation he got when he was leaving? Yeah. So, yeah, so this... <laughs> This captain in the Navy who was like, uh, I think his ship was docked in Guam or some shit. Mm-hmm. They were like, coronavirus was fucking exploding on his ship. And so he called, he, he sent a letter to the, the people at the top in the Navy, like blew the whistle on it. He's like, yeah. we need to do something about this. Also, there's no head of the Navy right now because uh, Trump fired him as well. Right. Or he like resigned. Or... And uh, yeah, somehow this this uh, got leaked or he, he didn't go through the proper channels. So uh, he was relieved of his job. Uh, mm-hmm. And he did, and he relieved of his job because he didn't want all of his fucking men to die on this ship, men and women, I guess. Maybe. Didn't uh, Trump also fire last night in the middle of the night, like the intelligence officer that was? Uh, yeah, there. Yeah, I anyways, don't know. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the next headline. Pentagon says it still hasn't sent ventilators because it hasn't been told where to send them. Yeah, it's this really, a really functional federal government we got here. So, like, yeah, the Pentagon, they have a couple thousand ventilators. They're just waiting on FEMA and uh, Health and Human Services yeah. to tell them where to send the ventilators. But uh, they uh, didn't do it. Maybe maybe no, they those, have at this point. But... Those ventilators are for the federal, federal government, not for the states, as Jared Kushner would say. Yeah. Those yeah. are up for us, not you. Which would be... I'm trying to think of anything qualifies as being federal but not state. Literally Washington, Wa- D.C., I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, but like that, yeah, even that, yeah, it's not a state and it is federal. Mm-hmm. It's a district. Of Columbus. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Jared. Do the image of him where he's like, Bruh! like on the podium, did you see it? Yeah, he does it's not inspire incredible. confidence. No, no at nothing all. confident about this guy. No. This is the guy who, as you'll recall, uh, his entire coronavirus game plan was uh, messaging friends yeah, on Facebook, ask, asking his 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 friend's dad to yeah. post a question on Facebook. So yeah, the same yeah. kind of process you'd go through to get a sponsor for your local like school dance. Yeah. Hey, your dad owns a dealership, right? Do you think he'd sponsor the dance? That's how yeah. rich people do things. Yeah. As population works from home, Walmart reports increased sales for tops, but not pants. What are we going to do with all these pants? Yeah. And this is apparently a trend. Like, The Gap, uh, a bunch of other companies were like, yeah, people are buy- buying stuff for the top, but, like, yeah. no pants. But that all Suit jacket with no pants? Every clothing company has seen the sales surge for, like, athleisure and, like, sweatpants and oh, stuff yeah. like that, which, good. Yeah. Be comfortable. Uh, I'm very comfortable. I just got, uh, I, I have very comfortable shoes all the time. I have those birds. Yeah. And I so they're so comfortable. I wear them around the house. My wife... Oh, I never what did the doing? end of it with <laughs> squeak, the shoes squeak, on. Squeak. The, the apartment, they're all over the place. So I, I bought some house shoes that like I Mr. only... Mr. fucking Rogers Yes, they're, that, they're only for inside the apartment. Yeah. So I, if I never walk outside with them, it's fine to walk around. So Calder Bluff, and they are so comfy. They got wool in the inside. They were $10 online. House shoes. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good... Look, she's happy. I'm yeah, happy. Your feet are happy. My feet are, my feet are thrilled about the whole thing. My feet are cold all the time. Folks, now is, there's no better time than now to house, invest, invest house in shoes. some house shoes. <laughs> You're going to love the way you feel. I guarantee it. Would you lick the bottom of your shoes? No, you wouldn't. Because no, you you've put been the house tracking shoes that on. shit all over the place. Then you put the house shoes on when you get home and mm-hmm. your feet are nice and warm. You take off your outside sweater, put on your house sweater. I do that the as fish. well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning into Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in the day. No, I literally have, I don't know where my jacket is now, but I take my jacket off and then I put on a sweatshirt. Yeah. And I put on my house shoes. Yeah. And they look like old man shoes. She, she, she was like, they, you, the, my dad has those exact shoes, is what she said. Hey, don't, miss, don't mess with a, a good thing. Oh, comfort God. is comfort. Ugh. Trump brags about high TV viewership of coronavirus briefings. This was on like... Number one on Facebook, baby. This was like Monday morning. This is like the first thing I woke up to was just Trump like this deranged sociopathic string of tweets where yeah. it's like it's like man like America sure does love Trump while doing these briefings uh, they love yeah. him look 
Yeah, just talking about it as if it's like the new season of The Apprentice or something. It's like, yeah, people are watching these briefings because they're fucking terrified. Yeah, it's the only thing it's happening the only thing in the happening. entire country. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's like it's hard to it's hard to qualify just like how weird and like detached this whole thread was. I both love and hate the fact that specifically CNN will cut away from the briefings whenever they see fit. So I have to change it to like Fox to see the yeah. full uncut director's mm-hmm. cut version of it. But uh, it was funny because the other day when uh, the My Pillow guy Mike Lindell was on, <laughs> as soon as he took to the the thing, it was just like. Dun, dun. All right, so I think CNN immediately cut away, yeah. cut away from my pillow man. I mean, I think they were probably right to do that. Like, yeah. Who the fuck? Why? I mean, I guess he's making masks or some shit. That's cool. Yeah. Don't I mean, need to see him like up there. Every preaching company to should everyone. be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's like the whole thing is like there's so many companies that are like doing very nice things and making masks and sewing even non-medical masks or, yeah. or trying to develop things, 3D printing items for nurses, and those people. No one hears from him. But when it's a Trump friend yeah. that's going to do the something. The pillow guy. Yeah. That get him up on stage in front of the whole country and say how amazing he is. Uh, Dumb. Uh, anyways, company apologizes for ill-advised plan to dock pay of workers getting stimulus checks. Yeah, this is some evil shit. There's also going on with the landlords, too. Like, well, just hand us over your stimulus check. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's bad. But, like, this is, like, especially like, your employer being, like, uh, well, you also, did get yeah, that check, so... You want your job back when this is over? You're going to have to hand over that check. Because, like, technically the money should go to me, <laughs> I think. I'm the job creator. Like, why should I have to pay you if the government's already paying you? You ever think about that? <laughs> why won't anyone think of the CEOs? Yeah, but anyway, one of their employees obviously, like, leaked the the, Good. the memo to yeah. the news. And then the company's like, oh, yeah, well, I guess we just didn't really think about it. Yeah, it was ill-advised. My bad. My bad. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, here's a fun one. Georgia oh. governor says he didn't know asymptomatic people could spread coronavirus. Yeah, he said this, uh, like, Friday. And, uh, I mean, we knew. Everyone kind of knew, yeah. yeah that, was, knew that, that was sort of, like, one of the one of the key stats for coronavirus was uh, the incubation period and the asymptomatic carrying and whatnot. Yeah. But uh, Brian Kemp, he, he, and he acted like... Th- like it was a very Trump thing to do. He acted like him finding out meant that everyone else... Nobody knew this was had, happening. Yeah. Had yeah. Just, but he's like, it's like, we all found out just today that like you can actually spread the disease without showing symptoms. Isn't that crazy? The building he works out of is four or five miles from the CDC headquarters. That's true. Yeah. Uh, and also, this is the same guy who had the gun in his ad saying that he would load up all the illegals in his own truck and drive them back. What the fuck? And also, he... Uh, uh, appointed, she was not elected, the lady who did the insider trading, she was appointed by Kemp. Yeah, yeah. Like, she wasn't an elected official. She was appointed. Yeah. And did the, all the insider trading with the uh, with the stock cool. sale. Yeah. So this, uh, they, they chose this guy over Stacey Abrams? Stacey Abrams. Great job, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Great job. And they just started their stay-at-home thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just this week. So, that's exciting. Their, their case numbers were ex- starting to explode yeah. the past few days. Uh, see how that goes. Florida is neck and neck with us right now. It is scary. Yeah, Cal- right. California's is numbers have big. like kind of like leveled so off. So far, yeah, it's uh, no. We don't want to get too excited about it. Yeah. But like that's but compared is, to other states, it's like California was looking pretty bad at first. And yeah, our numbers have grown pretty slowly. We have uh, over double the population of Florida, I believe. It's at least double the population of Florida, and their numbers are like neck and neck with us right now. And that that fucking governor keeps saying that it's everyone else's fault. Like, every time he gets a chance to talk about it, he's like, well, we did put the... Listen, we're doing fine. We got the borders, the Georgia-Florida border and the Alabama border. We got sheriff's officers and state patrolmen there making sure that none of those New, New Yorkers, Yorkers... yeah. Boarded my sheriffs to shoot New Yorkers on site. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, sir, do you have any salsa in that car? Yeah, I got some salsa right here. Where's that salsa from? New York, New York City! City. <laughs> Boy, you need some paste picante to get in this state. Uh, uh, fearing end of the world, man returns ancient stolen relic. <laughs> that man, the CEO of Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would never have that kind of... Uh, yeah, Hobby Lobby stole a bunch of relics from the Middle East during like the fucking Iraq war. It's a wild story. It's, it's amazing there even... None of these people are like... Didn't in, they do it like because there was so much turmoil over there with yeah. ISIS and everything? Yeah, it was really yeah. easy to like... Get, and, get things out of there? And transporting like ancient relics, like there's laws around that, like international laws. Mm-hmm. You can't just go and do it. And they... 
they did. They went and did it. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this guy is just just some dude who like grew up in Israel and like stole a, an old like ballista stone mm-hmm. from some museum when he was a teenager. Oh. It's like twenty years later now. He's like the guilt. Yeah, he's like, I don't know. Did I cause this? Well, I don't want to die with that guilt on my shoulders. So he sent it. He back thought he to caused the whole. Uh... I don't think he thought he caused it, but he he was worried about you know the end of the world happening while he still had this stolen artifact. Yeah, it's actually because you, Donald, you what you walked under a ladder. Yeah. Uh, and and Billy, Billy is watching this show. It's because you masturbate. And Steve. If you're watching, it's because you walked in front of that black cat and you didn't do anything about it. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, way to go. Anyways, coronavirus testing kits heading to the UK found to be contaminated with COVID-19. We're never getting out of this. Uh, you wanted the testing kits and not the the COVID-19 <laughs> samples? Yeah. You said you wanted COVID-19. Yeah. No, we said the tests. Ah, uh, simple mistake. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. I mean, at least they caught it uh, <laughs> That's good. before. Before they just started jamming COVID-19 in everyone's nose. Yeah. That's one way to do herd immunity. Just manually give everyone the disease. That's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, the UK, that was, their, that was almost their plan anyway. Yeah. The chicken pox party. Yeah. They've turned it around, though. Also, uh, like this whole like not interacting with people thing, it took me several seconds to even come up with people's names just there. Just boys' names. Yeah. I don't even know who exists anymore. Me neither. Yeah. Motorist pulled over by police during coronavirus lockdown argues journey was essential to buy weed. Not wrong. This was the UK, but I mean, if he was in California, that's that would, actually that's, a valid excuse. It's an excuse, yeah. They have, uh, you know, and I think a few other states have said so too, but the, uh, yeah, the cannabis industry is an essential service. They still yeah. have to exercise the social distancing guidelines. And, and they are running into problems with getting uh, federal relief funding because uh, it's still illegal federally, Man. which sucks, but I mean, we'll take care well, of it. That just means you need to support your local dispensary even more than before. The, the citizens of California will pull these weed stores up by their own bootstraps. Yeah. So, it's you you're not doing much. Not much of a weed smoker myself, mm-hmm. but uh 420 is coming up and I'll be damned <laughs> if this virus is going to stop gonna stop me from celebrating 420. Uh-huh. Uh, a gender reveal party sparks 10-acre fire in Florida. It's almost like these Every single gender reveal party that has ever happened has resulted in catastrophe. This one is like literally the exact same thing that happened in the, the Tannerite. One. Yeah, yeah, Tannerite. They're like, oh, you make the Tannerite go boom, and it's a big old cloud. Of Joe boosting. Exotic loves it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got like his his the guy who becomes his campaign manager when yeah. he runs for president. They met. In the gun section of Walmart, where that guy was the manager of yeah. the gun department, he's coming like, damn near every day, damn near every day, just buying tannerite, tannerite like, and ammunition. <laughs> and yeah, he's just like uh, Carol Baskin wants to confiscate this couch. Well, guess what? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> fills the couch with tannerite, explodes it. But like, yes, now you could you, you if you've seen the show, you have a good idea of the type of people who are going out and buying buckets of tannerite every day. Yeah, and they're the ones that want to do big ex- explosive gender reveal parties. Mm-hmm. I still maintain. There has never been a gender reveal party that has gone right. Even the one that I went to, uh, the my friend, the husband, found out that it was, uh, you know, not going to be a boy. <laughs> was he visibly disappointed? No, but he already had a girl, so he was uh, like, yeah, maybe we'll get one of each. Nope. Came downstairs wearing a pink t-shirt. He played it up as if he was well, sad, I've, but I've, he's happy. I've seen the photo. Yeah. It was very funny. <laughs> he, he was playing it up that he was sad, you but can he, still see it he loves eyes. his daughters very much. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, final headline, man arrested after high-speed chase claimed he was teaching dog to drive. I saw that video of that dog going around in circles for like yeah, four I hours. my dog could do that. Yeah. It was a pit bull. So I, it sounds like he had it in like cruise control and he was running the steering, mm-hmm. but like trying to keep his dog on there. Uh-huh. And it just got out of hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Couldn't stop. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's cool. Uh, sound, sounds like a bad idea, time. just like the Tannerite, but... Uh, a lot of bad ideas in this episode. Well, listen, if it wasn't for people making bad ideas, we'd be out of job. That's true. Mm-hmm. Bad ideas is my bread and butter. <laughs> bad ideas keep me paid. I can buy all the house shoes I want. Yeah. They were $10. You should find them online. They're great. I think they're called Clarks. Clarks? Yeah. They it even have like an old man shoe. named... <laughs> <laughs> Where's my Clarks? <laughs> Babe, fetch me my Clarks. <laughs> I need to get a, like a Labrador that just brings me my shoes now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, that's it for this week. I'm going to go home and put my shoes on. This week's weird news yeah. has come to a close. Uh, we've got other, <laughs> news other dump. Yeah. And, uh, Tech News Day. It's all there. It's all coronavirus in some way yeah. or another. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. We'll be back soon for some more uh, content, live streams, and otherwise. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye.